I welcome all of you once again. Thank you everyone for joining this conference session. Today's class will be given by His Christ Chaitanya Lila Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, you are there on the call. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. This is Chaitanya Lila Das from Mumbai, India. Prabhuji, you can start the class. Please accept my humble obeisances for Guru Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. Hare Krishna, I just wanted to ensure that uh, I am audible to everyone. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dandavas Pranam. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. Thank you so much. Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. So today we will be uh, reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4, Chapter 8, Text 58 The text reads Paricharya Bhagavato Yavatya Purva Sevita Ta Mantra Hridaye Naiva Prayunjyan Mantra Murtaye Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Srila Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Translation One should follow in the footsteps of previous devotees regarding how to worship the Supreme Lord with the prescribed paraphernalia or one should offer worship within the heart by reciting the mantra to the personality of Godhead, who is non-different from the mantra. Purport. It is recommended here that even if one cannot arrange to worship the forms of the Lord with all recommended paraphernalia, one can simply think about the form of the Lord and mentally offer everything recommended in the Shastras, including flowers, Chandan pulp, conch shell, umbrella, fan, and chamara. One can meditate upon offering and chant the twelve syllable mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Since the mantra and the Supreme Personality of Godhead are non different, one can worship the form of the Lord with the mantra in the absence of physical paraphernalia. The story of the Brahmana who worshipped the Lord within his mind as related in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or the nectar of devotion should be consulted in this connection. If paraphernalia is not present physically, one can think of the items and offer them to the deity by chanting the mantra. Such are the liberal and potent facilities in the process of devotional service. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvai Namaha Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivas Adi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So thank you everyone for joining us uh, today to discuss something on this uh, beautiful episode of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4. Specifically this particular verse helps us understand the process of execution of devotional service. We see in this world that how sometimes devotion is mystic mystically considered as a spontaneous expression of one's feeling of the Supreme. People perceive devotion as you know, what they have, the feelings that they have within their hearts 
and how what best could they express towards the lord but when we resort to the teachings of the guru sadhu and shastra we understand that devotional service devotion is not just a spontaneous expression we understand devotional service as a process which when followed very diligently delivers the result it is an ex- established fact that how if a proper process is not followed one can't achieve a proper result in this world what to talk of complicated episodes even 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 to have a proper chapati that successfully blows up when it is put on the flame requires a proper process to be in place even to fly an airplane you know there is a proper process that is followed because if we have a look into the cockpit the cockpit is filled with so many switches and controls that are there but then an expert pilot pilot he knows what is the exact process by which an airplane has to be started taken to the runway and finally you know uh, 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 has has to be airborne like that so similarly krishna consciousness is also a very specific process which is learned which is supposed to be learned from the devotees who have successfully executed in the past and just like any process a process has two components there is the theory part and there is the practical aspect of the process just like uh, way back in our school days we had read our chemistry lessons we had learned those lessons in the class that when we mix two elements like we mix up uh, say NaOH and hcl so that gives nacl and h2o so this is what we had learned the theory in the classroom but then we were taken by uh, by the lab uh, instructor into the actual practical laboratory where we were told this is how noh looks like this is how hcl looks like and this is how you got to mix them in this particular proportion you know heat it up and that is when you will see those uh, uh, effervescence coming out and you know some small little solid crystals getting formed and when we performed the experiment as per the instructions of the uh, lab in charge that is when we actually derived the result so similarly krishna consciousness or the process of devotional service is also a proper process that needs to be followed and when that process is followed we are able to actually perceive the result in our life there is a beautiful verse that is spoken by yudhishthir maharaj in mahabharat the one parava mahabharat he says tarko pratishtho shrutayo vibhinna nashav rishiras yasya matam na bhinnam dharmasya tattvam nihitam guhayam mahajano yena gata sapantha Srila Prabhupada quotes this uh, beautiful verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela 25th chapter 27th verse and he writes there that he explains the meaning of this particular verse he says dry arguments are inconclusive a great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered great sage simply by studying the vedas which are variegated one cannot come to the right path by which religious principles are understood the solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated self realized person consequently as the shastras confirm one should accept whatever progressive path the mahajanas advocate so that is how we see that even yudhishthir maharaj he is Uh, recommending that this path of uh, devotional service the uh, subtleties of dharma dharmasya tattvam they are they are very guhya they are very uh, kind of uh, uh, it, it is very difficult to understand them and this truth of religious principles is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated self realized person and that is from where they need to be understood so similarly here we see that 
now this process of krishna consciousness when we learn it from the devotees who have perfectly executed in the past that is when we also are able to experience the result properly and following in the footsteps of such previous devotees it gives us a couple of benefits the very first benefit that we accrue is that it helps us avoid the mistakes that we may potentially commit because no matter how great we may be even great souls in this world have made mistakes we have seen the example how even the personal attendants of uh, yamaraj the yamadutas they committed a mistake by trying to take ajamil to yamaloka <clears throat> we see a devotee like arjuna he is also committing a mistake by trying to argue with krishna why he doesn't want to fight in the battlefield of kurukshetra so even great souls in this world have made mistakes lord brahma lord shiva there are such examples presented in the shrimad bhagavatam and therefore since every human being in this world has these defects by which one can potentially commit mistakes if we venture out on our own to follow the process of krishna consciousness follow the process of devotional service there is a great risk that we also commit a lot of mistakes but when we follow in the footsteps of the previous devotees the previous acharyas that helps us avoid mistakes not just that another benefit that we accrue is that we get the mercy of the devotee we get the mercy of the lord that flows through the channel of his devotees shri uh, vishwanath vrindavan das vishwanath chakravarti thakur he mentions uh, in his guru ashtaka yes यस्य प्रसादात भगवत प्रसाद यस्य अप्रसादात न गति कुतो अपि दैट व्हेन वी फॉलो द प्योर डिवोटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड दैट इज व्हेन द मर्सी ऑफ द लॉर्ड फ्लोस थ्रू हिज डिवोटीज एंड डिवोशनल सर्विस इज आल्सो एंड एंड व्हेन वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस वी लर्न द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स the different forms by which we can worship the supreme personality of god and and here in the current context that we are looking at the principle of deity worship which is presented as one of the most potent forms of worship of the supreme lord and it is recommended by authorized recommended and authorized by many such acharyas prahlad maharaj in the 7th canto of bhagavatam presents deity worship as one of the nine processes of devotional service श्रवणम कीर्तनम विष्णु स्मरणम पाद सेवनम अर्चनम वंदनम दास्यम साख्यम आत्मनिवेदनम श्री रूप गोस्वामी व्हाइल डिस्क्राइबिंग द 64 वेज ऑफ वर्शिपिंग द सुप्रीम ही मेंशंस विग्रह सेवा एज वन ऑफ द फाइव मोस्ट पोटेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ सर्विंग द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड इन द 11th कैंटो वी सी द एग्जांपल ऑफ कृष्ण एम्फसाइजिंग एंड टॉकिंग टू उद्धव अबाउट द importance of worshiping his deity form so this process of worship of the deity form of the lord is what is technically known as the pancharatri ki vidhi shrila sanatan goswami explains this process of deity worship in great detail in one of his compositions the hari bhakti vilas and uh, even even all of us who have assembled here online we have also learned this art of deity worship from the devotees we didn't know what the deities are we didn't know how to serve the deities and we learned it from devotees how to bathe the deities how to dress the deities how to decorate the deities how to offer bhoga to the deities how to offer aarti to the deities all these numbers that we follow 4 2 3 7 you know uh, offering different articles in different number of times we didn't know all these things but we learnt it from the devotees and therefore the first principle i wanted to uh, put across today is that this process of krishna consciousness is something that we need to learn it is not a spontaneous uh, uh, expression that what we might feel would best would be best suited what we might feel would please krishna the best no better would be that we learn this process from the experienced devotees and carry it out in fact shri prabhupada he strongly recommends that along with pancharatri ki vidhi there has to be bhagavat vidhi also in place both the bhagavat vidhi and pancharatri ki vidhi 
Srila Prabhupada compares, they should be like two rails of a train line. Unless and until both the rails of a railway line are properly running parallelly, you know, the train can't uh, move on those in that track. There is a beautiful pastime. One time when Srila Prabhupada, he visited uh, New Vrindavan and he saw that the deities were very nicely being worshipped and very nicely decorated. And he appreciated and glorified all the devotees for their beautiful deity worship that they were, they were carrying out. But then, sure enough, Srila Prabhupada at one point of time, he became very grave and he mentioned very seriously that all of you are worshipping the deities very nicely and that gives me a lot of happiness. But at the same time, you should also read this, these books that I have uh, painstakingly you know, written down. Because if there is no understanding of the position of the deities, the importance of serving the deities like this, a time might come when all of you will blame me that why has my spiritual master you know, given this burden upon us. But then, if there is a proper Bhagavad Vidhi, the study of the scriptures, the study of Srimad Bhagavatam, the knowledge part that we were talking about, the theory part, when the theory part is properly in place, and the theory is accompanied by practice, that gives a wholesome picture. And that is how uh, Prabhupada very much strongly recommended the Bhagavad Vidhi to also accompany the Pancharatriki Vidhi. Now, if we have a look at this uh, detailed description presented, presented by Srila Sanatan Goswami in the Hari Bhakti Vilas, the Hari Bhakti Vilas describes a whole lot of different rules and regulations of the you know, exact manner in which these duties are, are to be worshipped, very high standards of cleanliness. And when we go across when we you know read those descriptions we might feel that you know maybe i won't be able to you know re even even uh, reach up to those standards what to talk of executing them but then that is where this particular verse i found this particular purport that is being penned by Srila Prabhupada comes to a rescue that krishna consciousness it is not just a strict regime to be followed Srila Prabhupada in the purport, the last line of the purport to this verse, he mentions that such are the liberal and potent facilities in the process of devotional service. Because devotional service, one of the qualities of devotional service is it is a pratihata, it is independent of material conditions. Whether one is able to properly execute those stringent rules and regulations or one may not be in a position to worship the deities very gorgeously and serve the deities in a very with a very high standard no even if those practical facilities may not be present there is a way out and that is where this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam you know helps us understand if you look at a, a very uh, larger sense, we find that how these Vedic literatures, they are aimed at uplifting people who are at different levels of consciousness. The practice of devotional service, the practice of bhakti, the practice of Krishna consciousness is not just meant for people who are at a very, very high level of consciousness. Uh, in the 12th ch chapter in the Bhagavad Gita, there is this uh, beautiful... Uh, thing that is being presented by Krishna himself when Arjuna is asking Krishna that which are to be considered which which of your devotees are considered to be most perfect and and how can they perfectly worship you now in reply to this question of Arjuna in the 12th chapter Krishna he doesn't just uh, mention that this is what is the best practice he gives a whole hierarchy that could be followed from the 8th verse to the 12th verse he presents the different options that could be there and that is where Krishna in the 12th chapter 8th uh, verse he mentions that the highest uh, position of a devotee is that the highest devotee is one who just fixes his mind upon me and engages all his intelligence in me but that if you cannot Fix your mind upon me without, devi without deviation, 
then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga in this way you will develop a desire to attain me so the best process is that one fixes his mind upon the supreme but then krishna knows very well that this may not be possible for everyone and therefore he gives the second alternative he mentions that if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga by doing so you will develop a desire to attain me but then still he understands that even this may not be possible so he gives the third alternative and he mentions that if you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga then just try to work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage but then if however you are unable to even work in this consciousness of me then try to give, act giving up all results of your work and try to be self situated but then finally krishna mentions that even if you cannot be self situated even if you cannot renounce the uh, fruits of your work if you cannot take to this pro- practice then just engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge better than knowledge however is meditation and better than meditation is the renunciation of the fruits of one's action for by such renunciation one can attain peace of mind so here in the bhagavad gita krishna he points out that devotion executing bhakti is not just meant for perfectly liberated souls no people at all different levels of consciousness have hope in fact uh, while while describing the characteristics of bhakti in the ninth chapter krishna mentions what is the uh, characteristic of pure devotional service through this beautiful verse he mentions raj vidya raj guhyam pavitram idam uttamam su sukham kartum avyayam that how pure devotional service it is su sukham it is not a set of stringent rules and regulations so here in the purport propad is writing that it is recommended here that even if one cannot arrange to worship the forms of the lord with all recommended paraphernalia one can simply think about the form of the lord and even mentally offer everything recommended in the shastras so here we see how shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam is actually a book of hopes shrimad bhagavatam is not just a set of do's and don'ts that is mentioned that if you want to come to me this is what you need to do if you want to come to me this is what you need to abstain and that is how bhagavatam is not just about do's and don'ts bhagavatam is about encouragement bhagavatam is about giving us hope that no matter where we are there is hope for us what next could we do to advance on this path of krishna consciousness and therefore even in the gita krishna mentions that it is not the offering that i am concerned about it is the it is the love by which that offering is made is what i am concerned about he says patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachati tad aham bhakt ti uparitam asnami prayatnatmanah so he mentions this word bhakti twice that how krishna is more focused upon the devotion the intent of the worshipper than the actual product that is being offered by the worshipper because whether the worship is opulent or simple the lord doesn't see what is being offered the lord actually sees how much the conditioned soul is willing to keep himself for his own enjoyment there is a beautiful anecdote in this regard that uh, how one time there was a man who wanted to uh, who who had applied who had bought tickets for a lottery and uh, he very much wanted to get this uh, amount of wealth maybe some uh, say 100000 dollars and you know that that was the first prize and he was so very much desiring of winning this 100000 dollars that he goes up to the temple and he prays to the lord that my dear lord i want to sign a deal with you that if i you know actually win these 100000 dollars 
I promise that I'll give 50% of the amount to you. That is what he promises. Next day, when the lottery results are declared, he finds that he he hasn't won $100,000. He has just won $50,000. So he goes back to the temple and he very smilingly, he replies back that I didn't know, my Lord, that you are so clever. I had bought a ticket for $100,000 and made you this promise that we will share 50-50 and even before I actually gave it out to you, you have kept your $50,000 and given me mine $50,000. So that is a very clever approach by which, you know, sometimes people approach the Supreme that, you know, be, being in best of both the worlds. So therefore, uh, the point herein we are discussing this, how the Lord, He sees devotion more than the offering. And this devotion, expression of this devotion may not require any material facilities. If material facilities are present very well, very nice, that we will offer with all of our, all of our hearts and desires. But even if you know, one may not be material competent, one may not be, it may not be possible to offer such uh, opulent offerings. But even if one makes that offering in his mind, that is also acceptable by the Lord and uh, Prabhupada is mentioning here the story of the Brahmana who worshipped the Lord within his mind as related in the nectar of devotion should be consulted in this connection. Now actually Prabhupada is uh, referencing the NOD here because uh, Srila Prabhupada had already written NOD prior to writing of this purport but later even in Srimad Bhagavatam itself in the seventh canto, I believe uh, this is uh, uh, seventh canto purport, seventh canto, uh, fifth chapter, in one of the purports, Srila Prabhupada is uh, writing this story. So I'll just read out the uh, section of the purport that is there, where Prabhupada is himself writing this story, that how in the city of Pratishthanapur, long ago, there resided a Brahmana who was poverty stricken, but innocent and not dissatisfied. One day he heard a discourse in an assembly of Brahmanas concerning how to worship the deity in the temple. In that meeting he also heard that the deity may be worshipped within the mind. After this incident the Brahmana having bathed in the Godavari river began mentally of worshipping the deity. He would wash the temple within his mind and then in his imagination he would bring water from all the sacred rivers in golden and silver water pots. He collected all kinds of valuable paraphernalia for worship and he worshipped the deities very gorgeously, beginning from bathing the deity and ending with offering arati. Thus he felt great happiness. After many years had passed in this way, one day within his mind, he cooked nice sweet rice with ghee to worship the deity. He placed the sweet rice on a golden dish and offered it to Lord Krishna. But he felt that the sweet rice was very hot and therefore he touched it with his finger. He immediately felt that his finger had been burned by the hot sweet rice and thus he began to lament. Now while the Brahmana was in pain, Lord Vishnu in Vaikuntha began smiling and the goddess of fortune inquired from the Lord why was he smiling. Lord Vishnu then ordered his associates to bring the Brahmana to Vaikuntha. Thus the Brahmana attained the liberation of Samipya, the facility of living near the Supreme Personality of Godhead merely by mentally worshipping the form of the Lord. So this is a very beautiful story wherein uh, we see the example of this uh, Brahmana from Pratishthanapur where he is mentally worshipping the Lord at the same time he is uh, successfully able to grasp the attention of the Lord. In the Chaitanya Charitamrit there is a similar incidence that uh, in the Madhya Leela first chapter wherein Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after the Rathyatra past time, after, after uh, he comes to Bengal and he has this desire to visit Vrindavan and he embarks upon his journey to Vrindavan 
now hearing about hearing about the lord's uh, decision to go to vrindavan many many of his devotees also want to accompany him now there is a devotee his name is uh, narsimhanand brahmachari now this narsimhanand brahmachari yeah this uh, it is explained that when sri narsimhanand brahmachari heard that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu would go to vrindavan he became very pleased and mentally began decorating the way there now sri narsimhanand brahmachari he began to actually serve sri chaitanya mahaprabhu within his mind and it is very uh, important to note that how you know he began contemplating that there is a broad road which is starting from the city of uh, kuliyagram where they were present and he be, he bedecks those roads with jewels and then he lays upon uh, that particular road a very thick bed of uh, very beautiful and fragrant flowers he mentally decorates both sides of the roads with uh, beautiful flower trees and at uh, regular intervals he places lakes of uh, very fragrant waters and these lakes uh, that were constructed by him uh, were constructed with jewels it is explained and they were filled with blossoming lotus flowers there were various there were various birds who were chirping and the water was exactly like nectar the entire road was surcharged with many cool breezes which carried the fragrances from various flowers and right from kuliyagram he was constructing this road all the way up till vrindavan but then by the time he reached to a place known as kanhai nat shala narsimhanand brahmachari he was just unable to construct this road within his mind beyond the place of kanhai nat shala and he could not understand why the road's construction could not be completed and he was kind of you know astonished by this uh, revelation but then you know that is when he made this prophecy that the lord might be wanting to go to vrindavan but then you will see in future that how the lord will actually go only till kanhai nat shala and then he will return back all of you will come to know of this later but now i can say this with great assurance and we read uh, later on that how when sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he actually leaves for vrindavan there is a place close to kanai natshala by the name ramkeli where he meets roop and sanatan goswami and he has talks with them and because sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is being followed with by many many of his devotees sanatan goswami he remarks to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu that if you just go to vrindavan with so many of your these uh, devotees maybe you will not be able to relish vrindavan maybe you will not be able to understand the uh, beauty and potency of vrindavan and therefore vrindavan is not a place that is supposed to be gone with you know so many of uh, uh, these followers like that and that is how sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he actually takes uh, the advice of sanatan goswami very seriously and he uh, no uh, he returns back from there and of course the next time uh, he again embarks but this is not through the regular path he takes the path of the jharikhanda forest and you know meeting all those animals and is accompanied by uh, just uh, one more devotee and that is how you know he uh, goes to vrindavan the second time like that so yes there are these two beautiful instances presented in the shastra the story of the brahmana from pratishthanpur and the story of narsimhanand brahmachari these stories are given in these script- scriptures to give us that confidence that even if the lord is worshiped in the mind because the lord is supreme absolute truth because the supreme personality of god had is non different from his form and his uh, you know uh, his meditation and therefore even when he is worshiped in meditation that also bears a similar kind of result propa this writing here in this beautiful purport one can meditate upon offering and chant the 12 syllable mantra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya 
since the mantra and the supreme personality of godhead are non different one can worship the form of the lord with the mantra even in the absence of physical paraphernalia so yes the best category is worshiping the deity form of the lord with the highest quality of offering but even if those high quality offering those uh, best uh, kind of physical paraphernalia may not be present the lord accepts the intent of the heart the lord accepts the uh, even even when the worship is performed in the mind in fact in the padma purana it is mentioned that krishna and his name are non different it is said nam chintamani krishnas chaitanya rasa vigraha purna shuddho nitya mukto abhinatvan nam namino the holy name of krishna is transcendentally blissful it bestows all spiritual benedictions for it is krishna himself the reservoir of all pleasure krishna's name is complete and it is the form of all transcendental mellows it is not a material name under any condition and it is no less powerful than krishna himself since krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities there is no question of its being involved with maya krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual it is never conditioned by the laws of material nature this is because the name of krishna and krishna himself are identical abhi natvam naam namino the naam the name of the lord and namino to whom the name belongs they are abhinna they are non different and therefore when we worship the supreme personality of godhead you know by chanting his holy names hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare you know the lord it is mentioned that the lord is personally present to accept our offering of the holy names and therefore the, we see that the process that is being uh, advocated that was being inaugurated by sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and was taught to us by his divine grace shri prabhupad bears such a uh, beautiful uh, you know result that how you know just chanting the holy names of the lord how it is a very liberal at the same time it is a very potent facility in the process of execution of devotional service but then uh it is it is it is not just the name but then along with the name the name follows the name is uh, you know followed by the qualities of the lord the form of the lord the past times of the lord and therefore when we keep reading the books of shrila prabhupa that is when we come to know about these things because uh, when we read the books that is when the naam roop gun and leela of the supreme personality of godhead actually you know becomes situated within the heart because without knowledge one cannot have proper meditation if if we don't know about the naam roop gun and leela of the lord it will be very difficult for us to meditate upon the same and similarly and and therefore there is this importance of reading and hearing the books of shrila propal so that when we have that knowledge when we actually develop that desire to approach krishna even within the mind even within the mind we are able to perceive that result a beautiful example in this connection is just like uh, when a cow eats grass a cow he may uh, the cow might be grazing the field all day long and it will keep all these grasses within its belly and then when it comes back to the shed the cow actually takes out all the grass that is there in the belly and it ruminates on the grass so similarly a devotee when a devotee he reads these spiritual literatures he associates with devotees he may not be able to understand everything on the go understand everything that one is reading or one is hearing or one is you know visualizing but then when one is back into one's own uh, uh situation one's own uh, facility that is when uh, one actually is able to ruminate upon the uh things that one has seen things that one has heard and therefore you know uh, when we read the books of shrila propa that is when it facilitates our meditation 
as well and the and yes as it is being mentioned here that krishna consciousness is very simple to execute su sukham kartum avyayam propad writes in his uh, raj vidya book that there are no stringent rules and regulations that we have to sit so straight for so long and do so many gymnastics or control our breath no the process is very easily and happily done everyone wants to dance everyone wants to sing eat and hear the truth you know propad said that this our process is very simple chanting dancing and feasting this process is truly susukham very happy but then at the same time propad gives a sweet warning as well propad mentions that krishna consciousness is so simple that you may miss it someone may think that how could you know achieving the supreme personality of godhead be so simple even to achieve small temporary results in this world requires a lot of endeavor requires a lot of struggle on our part and how can someone advocate that just by chanting dancing and feasting and you know hearing krishna katha one can approach and achieve the summum bonum of all creation the supreme absolute truth in the entire creation yes krishna consciousness is so simple but at the same time it is so simple that one may miss it and yes even though krishna consciousness is simple it consists of very simple processes but the catch here is that one needs to consistently do it with enthusiasm chanting may be very easy on day one chanting may be very easy you know for the first few months for the first few years but then to actually chant with one's own heart and feeling day after day month after month year after year actually requires a very strong desire actually requires enthusiasm chanting dancing feasting you know all these festivities of krishna consciousness to enthusiastically and consistently execute these simple process of krishna consciousness is what will give us the uh, result is what will award us the highest uh, benediction that may exist in the entire of creation and therefore we see again looking at this uh, verse and concluding whatever uh, we have been discussing today is that the process of krishna consciousness we discussed in the beginning that to achieve a proper result a process is very much required to be in place and this process of krishna consciousness is supposed to be learned by those successful practitioners of the past the acharyas of the past who have successfully executed it and we saw the recommendation by yudhishthir maharaj that how the intricacies of dharma are very difficult to understand on our own we may not be able to figure out how these religious principles work but then if we just follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas the previous devotees we will be saved from a we will be saved from many mistakes that we may potentially make and at the same time we'll be able to successfully receive the mercy that is coming through the channel of the devotees uh, through the channel of the devotees the mercy of the lord and thereafter we saw that one of the bona fide processes of uh, worshiping the supreme lord is through deity worship which is recommended by great authorities like pralad maharaj krishna himself shrila rupa goswami and uh, shrila sanatan goswami explains the process of uh, deity worship and his hari bhakti vilas but then uh, shila prabhupada also mentions that pancharatri ki vidhi the process of deity worship should be accompanied by bhagavat vidhi the reading of scriptures but uh, krishna consciousness is not just a, a strict set of rules and regulations there are gradations that are in place because the vedic literatures they are aimed at uplifting people at all different levels of consciousness and therefore krishna consciousness this process of devotional service even if one is devoid of the highest uh, quality of physical paraphernalia for deity worship one may uh, one the the better you know a more important aspect of uh, worship is one's devotion because whether it is opulent or simple the lord sees that how much one keeps for himself rather than how much one is actually offering to the lord and uh, talking about this devotion even if physical facilities may not be present 
even by meditating on the Lord, uh, one can achieve the uh, blessings of the Lord. And we saw the examples of the Brahmana from Pratishthanapur and the example of Narasimhananda Brahmachari. And thereafter we saw that how meditating upon the Lord through His holy name is also very much potent. And we saw the uh, verse from Padma Puran which mentions that Krishna and His holy name are not different. But to meditate on the holy name, to meditate on the uh, qualities of Krishna, to meditate on the pastimes of Krishna, in the very first place one needs to know them. If we don't know the qualities of Krishna, it would be very difficult for us to meditate upon the qualities of Krishna. And therefore, if we see the nectar of devotion, we find how Srila Prabhupada, he has very, very, he has explained in great details those, you know, uh, different qualities of Sri Krishna. And yes, uh, execution of Krishna consciousness is very simple. It is not a very difficult process. It is happily executed through the process of chanting, dancing and feasting. But then, no matter how simple it may appear, Prabhupada has warned that Krishna consciousness is so simple that you may miss it. And therefore, we see that the catch is in consistently carrying out this simple process with enthusiasm. Uh, I'd like to stop here and thank all of you for your uh, patient listening. If you have any questions, uh, we can have them. Hare Krishna Prabhu, this was a very, very beautiful class. Thank you so much for your association. The class was fantastic. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Very wonderful class, Prabhuji. And uh, thank you for your And uh, you, you mentioned about the deity worship at home also. So in USA means uh, we are working also and we don't have so many other means. So sometimes we have to go outside for a longer time, um, for a week. Or, then how to take uh, care of the deities at home then, at that time? Yeah, so we, uh, cannot, about... we cannot take with them. Uh, uh, we cannot take them with us. So they are staying at home, but uh, nobody at home to take uh, to worship them. We cannot give them to our right. neighbors so because we don't have so many means there. Right. So, right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, talking about the practical aspect uh, when it comes to deity worship, definitely it is mentioned that there are different standards for different, you know, uh, places. Like they say, different slokes for different folks. So similarly, when we talk about worshiping the deities within the temple, it is said that inside the temple. Everyone other than the deities is a servant of the deity. And the deity is the supreme and everyone else has to orchestrate his you know, schedule, his priorities for the pleasure and service of the deities. But at the same time, when we talk of worshipping the deities at home, it is said that the deities actually go as per the convenience of the worshippers. That is being explained. And therefore, even when uh, we, have, uh, we may have to go out and keep our deities, put our deities to rest, we may just carry a picture of our deities and you know wherever we may be we may offer anything that we that might be possible maybe some dry fruits or whatever and even if that is not possible maybe we can just chant for them keeping that picture in front of us because the essential principle in this regard is that it is not the physical execution of our expression of devotion for which we will be held you know, the Lord is not a sadist who is like, you know, kind of waiting for us to catch on the right opportune moment where we fail in our execution of devotional service. No. Krishna, he is, you know, he sees the good aspect of it. You know, he sees that how my devotee even, uh, it, it might be okay, you might not, it might not be possible for the deities to take, but then the desire is so strong that still he wants to serve me, her, she wants to serve me. So yes, whatever may be physically, uh, you know, possible, that will do, but then 
even if it is not possible to take the DTs, we may just have a picture of the DTs. And uh, even if the even even if carrying the picture may not be possible, if we are in some corporate uh, environment or uh, you know with uh, busy with some function or anything maybe we just to remember them even remembering the dts you know even that simple act is dt worship yes it is dt worship and that is what uh, i believe uh, as per my little understanding that krishna he is not concerned about the exact uh, manner but he is more concerned about the intent our desire to worship him hope that addresses uh, your question to a certain degree Mataji yes yes Prabhuji thank you and then you uh, tell you told about the mental worship Prabhuji sometimes I do it's so difficult to do the practical worship that is more easier than the mental worship because it's finished within a second so you are done so to contemplate and to concentrate on the each and every part, it's very hard. It looks so easy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Definitely it is uh, difficult. You know, worshipping the Lord in the mind may not be very easy. But even when we look at the physical aspect of it, the whole purpose of engaging in practical devotional service is that ultimately we have come to a platform of Satatam Kirta Yantoma that always we are able to remember Krishna, always we remain connected to Krishna. I remember one time uh, His Grace Jananivas Prabhu uh, had been here to Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Mandir and uh, one of us you know just asked him this question that uh, you know uh, while we worship the deities um, Initially, there is a lot of excitement, but then eventually it kind of, you know, becomes routine and then you just, it, you know, you know what to do and you know, it just goes, it goes, uh, it, it just happens. But then, you know, Prabhuji, he gave a very beautiful reply. He said that, yes, actually, that is where we want to reach, that we are just absorbed, we are just absorbed in the process and that absorption in process eventually will lead to a state of absorption wherever we are, not just with, when we are physically in front of our deities. That principle of absorption, because if we see at the you know, end point of our lives, we may not, it may not be possible for us to you know, leave our bodies while worshipping the deities, but then it is that sense of absorption that is very much required. And that is what uh, Krishna also mentions in the Gita, that uh, when one, when one actually leaves his body thinking of me, antakale cha maam eva smaran muktva kalevaram. So that smaran is what, you know, what, what is going to be the product of a continuous engagement in, uh, a continuous and a regulated engagement in serving Krishna. So yes, uh, the regulative process of devotional service gives birth to that uh, spontaneous absorption in the Supreme Lord as well. So in a sense, just to conclude, to put it short, <laughs> is that uh, on a practical level, yes, engaging in practical deity worship will ultimately help us uh, develop that absorption, which we will uh, carry on you know, yeah, even when we are not physically present of before our deities, like that. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. And good to hear you on the conference, Prabhu. Uh, I met with you last month in Ahobilam Yatra. Yeah, I remember, Mataji. Mm -hmm. Thank same, you. Same here. Very nice to mm -hmm. uh, hear of you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I have one question. You were talking about how Krishna and Bhagavad Gita chapter 12 from 8 to 12 verses talks about various levels of uh, surrender to Him. So I'm a little confused about some verses there because Krishna says, if you're not able to perform regulative principles, then you work for me. And then He says, if you're not able to work for me, offer the results to me. And then in the last verse He says, if you're not able to offer the results, then renunciate your actions. So can you tell the difference between working for Krishna offering the results to him and uh, renunciate your results. So can you please explain that, Prabhu? Yeah, uh, it is, uh, in the, this is uh, actually in the 10th and 11th uh, verse he is mentioning that if you cannot practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then just work for me. Because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. 
but then if you are unable to work in this consciousness then try to act giving up this result so these these two uh, you know uh, the the highest level is that one fixes his mind upon krishna but then if fixing upon mind may not be possible then follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga you know subject oneself to the you know uh, set of do's and don'ts you know what is what needs to be done what is you know anukulasya sankalpa pratikulasya varjanam all that but then even if one is unable to properly discipline one's senses then just try to engage yourself in working for my pleasure because if we just engage our senses in working for hai krishna's pleasure eventually we will be able to you know follow these uh, regulative principles these principles of do's and don'ts but then uh, if one is unable to even engage in working for krishna then at least cultivate some knowledge that is the last part that you know krishna is uh, mentioning that if you cannot try to uh, even work then try to act giving up all the results of your work and try to be self situated like that so engaging for krishna means suppose we go to work we study so all those how can we those are all not direct engagements for krishna but uh, can we still consider we make them as engagements for krishna by being krishna conscious while working or while studying how how do differentiate between actually engaging our senses for krishna and engaging while doing mundane jobs yeah uh, basically uh, it is explained that even while we might be absorbed in you know so called dealing with uh, uh, people outside dealing with uh, quote unquote mundane jobs but then if the desire within is to do our you know regular activities so that ultimately it pleases krishna if that desire is pleasing that you know whatever i may be engaged in that desire that that all those activities the whatever i may be accruing whatever i may be benefiting from my engagement in the outside world that is meant for your satisfaction o oh lord so it is this consciousness that is important it is not the physical engagement that is important just like when we uh, see the case of arjuna in the bhagavad gita arjuna was very much apprehensive about actually fighting the war and killing his own relatives but then we if he when he got a proper purpose behind executing the same activities so that purpose gave him the proper consciousness of carrying out the same activities which for which one for which uh, he was uh, you know pretty apprehensive about some time back so similarly we may be working in the outside world but if we have that consciousness that whatever results i may be getting i'll be up, you know using these for satisfying krishna it is not for my personal sense gratification because for a devotee a devotee doesn't have two aspects of his life the material aspect of his life and the spiritual aspect of his life a devotee sees life from a more wholesome perspective he sees every aspect of his life in connection to krishna and therefore it is not the actual engagement it is not about being in the temple or being in the company or you know being uh, in the marketplace while shopping whatever it is the actually intent it is the actual desire of serving the supreme lord uh, which is more important and that is what krishna is referring to here that try giving up all the results of your work and what krishna is meaning by this is that all these results that uh, i may be getting i'll try to give up it for your pleasure i'll not be the enjoyer of all these results i'll be using all these results for your pleasure hope hope that is clear that is like clear to a certain extent at least yes prabhu thank you so much hari thank krishna thank you ma'am hari krishna so mata ji what is your name mata ji hari krishna i am amrit gaurangi from atlanta oh, thank you mata ji thank you mata ji
Hare Krishna, anybody else has any question or comments for Prabhuji? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, please accept my humble obeisance. Uh, Hare Krishna is Prabhuji. There a, is, there any, is, is there any qualification for doing deity worship, Prabhuji? So can, so, you know, without knowing these details, you can someone do and become seva and everything, right? Uh, yeah. What what I would like to uh, put forth here is that let's start. Even before starting, if you are bothered about aparads, if you are you know too much concerned about you know what would happen, nay, Krishna is more eager for us to see us start worshiping him than actually you know uh, trying to go he- wrong here and there. So yes, it uh, it is the desire that is very much important in the very first place, but at the same time. When we have that desire, let that desire be directed by an experienced devotee. When, our, when we voluntarily get our desires of serving Krishna directed by an experienced devotee, then the chances of aparad, they you know, reduce to a very large extent. That is, that is what is my understanding. So yes, actually speaking, there is no such qualification for worshipping Krishna. You know, to start worshipping Krishna at least, because uh, you know, Krishna is waiting for us to approach him and you know, worshipping worshiping him. He is pleading to the people in this material world, man mana bhav mad bhakto mad yaji, you know, yadi, yaji refers to worshipping me. So that is a direct instruction of Krishna to worship him. But yes, uh, just like in any other process, uh, similarly in the process of Krishna consciousness also, we may start at a certain level, but over a period of time, you know, uh, we may need to ensure that we also improve in terms of our quality of worship, improve in terms of our quantity of worshipping Krishna. Just like we may have started with chanting a few rounds, but eventually we start, you know, we increased our rounds and there is a constant endeavor on our parts to improve the quality of rounds. So similarly, even worshipping Krishna, you know, it needs to be started first. We may start first and then get it directed by more experienced devotees so that we may improve in our standard of worshipping Krishna, whether that is deity worship, whether that is chanting of the holy names, whatever process of Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Very, very beautiful, crystal clear explanation in your lectures. Uh, I have a question connected to the question above, below, uh, I mean before. So this question is, um, nowadays uh, we see that where devotees uh, who uh, start chanting, coming to Bhakti Vriksha, are more enthusiastic to worship the uh, deities uh, before they chant 16 rounds. So, how should we? Uh, w- what is the standard for this, and how should uh, we guide them? Uh, Mataji, I would like to take shelter of this particular verse itself. The translation of the verse that we read today. Uh, it, say, it says that one should follow in the footsteps of previous devotees regarding how to worship the Supreme Lord with the prescribed paraphernalia. So, in a sense, the principle goes that all these different aspects of Krishna consciousness, the ninefold process that is explained by Prahlad Maharaj, you know, uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, all these processes are equally potent. Now, which of these processes do we do first, do we pay more attention to? All these comes in the category of details. And it is not the details that are you know, highlighted by, either by the scriptures or you know, uh, spoken in some public forum. And therefore, when it comes to incorporating the principle of how the principle of following the different processes of Krishna consciousness, do we incorporate in our daily life, that is where maybe intervention or a guidance of more senior devotee who will know the situation in a more detailed uh, context, maybe such a devotee will be able to actually help us out. Because uh, it's not that, uh, you know, just, just one rule fits all kind of a thing. No, it's not like that. 
So yes, all these uh, processes, the chanting of the holy names is also important. The worship of the deities is also important. Even uh, even in the temple, we see that uh, every time it may not be possible to actually chant all the rounds before you know one actually gets into the altar to worship the deities. Maybe sometimes uh, first there is deity worship and then you know chanting follows. But then that is with regards to one particular situation. But then if if uh, one is not into you know regulated uh, regular deity deity worship, then definitely the chanting proceeds. So how to adjust these different aspects will require the you know guidance of a, uh, a more experienced devotee who knows the uh, situation in a more detailed manner. Uh, thank you. To be specific, uh, my question is, uh, since I have heard that uh, uh, chanting 16 rounds um, and then taking initiation after that, one uh, is given the deities to worship uh, and uh, the chanting 16 rounds uh, helps in uh, nullifying the offenses that one would eventually you know, not be able to uh, avoid it while doing uh, deity worship. So. That was how it was in late 90s and 2000s, but now I see that um, uh, people who are chanting four rounds or eight rounds, uh, they are getting deities and they start to worship. So is that is that standard of... Um, uh, here, when I meant chanting 16 rounds, not necessarily before we uh, worship the deities, but that as a regular routine. Uh, how would you suggest uh, that... Uh, or what's your advice for a person um, to start the deity worship, whether they should be chanting 16 rounds or is it okay? If they uh, Mataji, if you, if you ask my understanding, I can present my understanding in this regard, is that our practice depends on the level of knowledge that is available to us and therefore the degree to which a person is educated, a degree to which one is trained, to that degree one understands what should proceed before, whether one should be chanting 16 rounds first and then worshipping the deities. But you know, maybe in a different context, for a devotee to uh, become more, uh, for a devotee to get some more encouragement in Krishna consciousness, maybe beginning with deity worship might be okay. But eventually, the practice has to be definitely appended with the understanding that how one cannot uh, reduce the importance of chanting the holy names of the Lord. So yes, no matter what begins first, whether it is the chanting of the 16 round begins first or the chanting of deity worship begins first, one needs to understand that there are standards that needs to be achieved in both the regard. So it is not that, you know, uh, if we just keep worshipping the deities, but at the same time the chanting is, you know, kind of neglected even over a period of time, maybe that may not be appropriate. But to begin with, this is my personal uh, opinion, to begin with, whatever encourages, whatever gives a devotee more encouragement to, go on the, to grow on the path of Krishna consciousness might be okay in the beginning. But then once having started, there needs to be proper training in place, proper uh, advices uh, should be taken by the devotees as to how one should grow in a wholesome manner, not just what I feel that, you know, uh, I may grow the best like that. I may feel that uh, I like deity worship, so uh, I may, you know, just keep uh, worshipping the deities all my life, but then, you know, I don't like all this chanting stuff and all that. So maybe I'll just do a bare minimum, a couple of rounds and uh, like that. Maybe uh, I want to prove of that fact. Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you, Bhattaji. Do we have any other questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Very, very wonderful class. Very, very nice. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank, thank you. Nice. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Please come again. Give us your association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for your encouraging words. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी धन और प्रणाम अगुष्ट शील प्रभुपाद एंड गुरु महाराज वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल क्लास प्रभु जी एंड वेरी वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव सो थैंक यू सो मच इफ नो वन हैज एनी वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम